Did Jesus really rise from the dead? If he did, it's the most important thing that's ever happened. But many people today think that what we know about the world scientifically rules out any possibility that he did. We don't even need to think about whether the historical evidence is any good. So is it scientifically impossible that Jesus rose from the dead? One of the main things that we have to realize when we're thinking about history is that history and science are similar in some ways and very different in others. The whole point about science is that science studies what can be repeated. I was listening to a radio program just this morning where somebody said, well, the great thing about these experiments is that in principle we can repeat them so we can get a firm uh, and sure take on what's actually the case. He was talking about medical experiments. The point about history is that nothing is ever quite the same again. You can't, as somebody said, step into the same river twice, the water has flowed on, things are different now. If Julius Caesar had crossed the Rubicon a second time, it wouldn't have meant the same as when he crossed it the first time. In fact, he only did it once, and so on and so on. So in history, we're always talking about things which can't, in fact, be repeated. So that the historian always has to be prepared to say, well, this may not have happened before, it may never happen again, but it's possible that something did happen. When the first space flight took place, when the first man walked on the moon, that had never happened before until recently it would have been completely unthinkable, but we know that in fact it did happen. Science proves that dead critters stay dead apart from the intervention of God. But science doesn't say anything pertaining to whether God, if he exists and wanted to raise Jesus, could indeed do so. The illustration that I give is for my son, uh, say he's three years old, if a hundred billion people try to walk across a lukewarm swimming pool and they all sink, the chances of my son walking across that lukewarm swimming pool is not a hundred billion to one. Um, if I'm there holding his hands and walking along the side of the pool and, and, and uh, holding his weight up as he walks on water along the swimming pool, well then the chances of him walking on water are virtually a hundred percent and a hundred billion people being unable to do that says nothing about whether my son could do it. Now maybe you'd respond and say, well, yeah, but you were an external agent who assisted him, so that's cheating. Well, precisely. And if God exists and wanted to raise Jesus, a hundred billion people not coming back to life by natural causes doesn't do a thing in terms of a prob establishing a probability of Jesus coming back to life. And that's why the resurrection is such an explosive event, because we know, in terms of repeatable scientific evidence, of course, that dead people don't rise. The early Christians knew that just as well as we did. And that this wasn't something that was discovered in the 18th or 19th century by clever modern scientists. But in fact, the early Christians all said, we are who we are. We are doing what we are doing because God raised Jesus from the dead. And the historian has to look at that in that sense, scientifically, not as a repeatable experiment, but how do we give the best explanation for the data that we have in front of us? Science tells us what is generally possible in a natural world. Christians don't say that the resurrection is a natural event. They say it's been one of those times when God broke in to our world. So it's not something that's governed by natural law. It's an exception. Christians don't think the resurrection happened naturally. Lots of the new atheists are harking back to a philosophy which was really championed by a guy called David Hume. And he basically said, look, we can't believe in things that can't be proven. So he, he came up with this idea that um, unless you could prove a statement, it, it just wasn't worthy of even being considered. The new atheists are, are trying to resurrect this. So Hume said, you know, unless uh, you can prove something, either what he called analytically, which would mean you can use maths, an equation, or something's true by definition, a circle is round or bachelors are unmarried. So unless you can come up with an analytical proof, or an empirical proof, so a repeatable scientific experiment to, to prove something. So, you know, my filling is gold. We can go into a, a, a laboratory and, and um, test whether what I say is true. So unless something is analytically verifiable, provable, or empirically verifiable, we can't even discuss it. It's not capable of being true. People say, well, you know, the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, it's not true by definition. You can't use a maths equation to prove it. It's not empirically true. Therefore, we shouldn't even be discussing it. 
And it's fascinating this is coming back because actually uh, what philosophers are, uh, are coming after Hume discovered is that Hume's idea itself collapses. It's neither true by definition nor is it empirically verifiable. So the philosophy upon which naturalism um, the big ideology behind atheism, that philosophy itself can't sustain itself. It's a faith commitment as much as any other faith commitment. It's a worldview. It's not, it's not a scientific perspective. So in the same way that uh, 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 many scientists would say, well, there are lots of things we can't prove. We can't go back and repeat the Big Bang, but we believe the Big Bang happened on the basis of evidence. Lots of scientific propositions are based on evidence. So the same is true of history. And I would argue the resurrection of Jesus is historical in that sense. We can't prove it. We can't do a repeatable experiment in that sense, but we can go back and examine the evidence and make a decision about its truthfulness. Yeah, it does seem today that in the West, science trumps everything. Uh, I think there would be a whole line of things I would say to that kind of response. One is that history, far from being irrelevant, history is required. It is self-defeating to try to put history down because the scientist needs history. If the scientist has to start from square one every time they do an experiment, uh, they're not going to get very far. I think that that question, the possibility of miracles, is a logically secondary question that will be posed later after one has established the inductive data that needs to be explained. The question of miracles only arises when one seeks for the best explanation of the inductive data base or the, the facts to be explained. So establishing facts like the burial of Jesus by Joseph of Arimathea, the empty tomb, the post-mortem appearances of Jesus, the origin of the disciples' belief in his resurrection, is not something that's outside the purview of the ordinary secular historian. Those in and of themselves are purely natural events that can be investigated by any disinterested historian. The question of miracles arises only when you ask, well, what is the best explanation for the evidence of the empty tomb, the post-mortem appearances, and the transformation of the disciples? And that's when one then will encounter the question of whether or not it's legitimate to infer a miraculous explanation. But that's a secondary issue. The first issue that needs to be dealt with is establishing what are the facts to be explained. And so the historian is always faced with the challenge to look at all the evidence. How do you explain, in the case of the resurrection, the rise of early Christianity? Granted that we know quite a lot about other Jewish resistance movements, royal movements, rebellion movements, whatever, believing that this was God's moment, etc., etc., throughout the time of Jesus, both 100 and 200 years before him and 100 or so years after him. There were plenty of such movements. Routinely, they ended with the violent death of the founder. And in no other case did anyone say a few days or a few months or years later, actually, God has raised him from the dead. Of course they didn't, because there was no suggestion that that had happened. Either they managed to get away with it, or they were all killed as well, or they found themselves another leader. The historical challenge of early Christianity is, why did the early Christians, who were Jews expecting God's kingdom, like so many other Jews were expecting God's kingdom at the time. Why did they say that this had happened and that therefore God's kingdom had been launched, albeit in a very surprising and startling new way? The historian faced with that uh, new movement has to come up with a convincing explanation of why that took place. And I submit that easily the best explanation for that is that Jesus really was bodily raised from the dead. The Christian claim isn't that Jesus came back to life in some natural way. It's that God raised him from the dead supernaturally. So the fact that when people die, they normally stay dead isn't relevant. To reject the evidence that Jesus rose because we've decided in advance that it's impossible isn't a decision based on facts. It's a decision based on a prior worldview. In day-to-day -day life, we'd call that a prejudice. We need to get beyond this prejudice 
to look at the evidence itself. But can we really know about something that happened 2,000 years ago? We'll look at this question next time. <laughs>